welcome to another episode. So on this one, something very exciting has happened. My roughly six-year-old apple tree grown from a seed has bloomed for the first time ever. So whenever someone tells you that it takes like a lifetime for a tree grown from a seed to flower and produce fruit, that is not necessarily true at all, okay? And there are certain species of trees that take very long to produce uh, fruit from, for growing from a seed. And that's where grafting comes in. They take, you know, a scion from a producing fruit tree, a lot of times apples and pears and peaches, whatever have you. They will graft it onto the rootstock of a certain, of a certain um, rootstock that has properties to them that are beneficial. Maybe they're more uh, disease resistant, maybe they're more dwarfing or semi-dwarfing, maybe they are more cold tolerant. There's all kinds of reasons why people graft fruit trees onto a rootstock that has a certain property to it, okay? However, if you grow them from a seed and they're on their own roots, a lot of the times they can be more healthy because they aren't dwarfing. They're more vigorous a lot of the times. So that's really been kind of the case in this one. It's a pretty decent sized tree. The only reason really why it's not bigger than what it is after six years is because it's in a one and a half gallon pot. You know, I've never really given it too much attention. Honestly, it's uh, an apple tree grown from a seed. You know, it's not something that I've really paid too much attention to. However, to my amazement, I, really, I noticed this year that it was finally producing flowers, which means I'm gonna get, hopefully, apples, which they may or may not be good. There's really no way of knowing this until I actually get some fruit off of it. Now, a little bit of backstory behind this tree is that it's a, what I suspect was a Red Delicious. And if it is this particular uh, Red Delicious that I which in itself isn't a great, amazing apple or anything. It's honestly pretty, pretty boring. It's pretty plain, you know, there's nothing too exciting about it. But if it's this particular tree, I remember that I was out taking a walk on um, like maybe June or July, somewhere in the summer. And I just was like, well, you know, I'm just gonna take these seeds home and I'm just gonna try to grow an apple tree from it. You know, it was just when I first started gardening and um, I just thought it'd be fun. So after my walk, I took these seeds home and I cold stratified them, which means that you take a seed and you, you subject it to cold, cold temperatures and basically stimulate winter. And cold stratifying is usually done temperatures below five degrees Celsius, which is like 40, 45 degrees Fahrenheit. If you subject them to those temperatures for a couple of months, two to three months usually, then it gets its chill hours met and it'll start sprouting. So I just put this, since it was in the middle of the summer, since I just, I just put it in the fridge and after a couple of months it, they started sprouting and this was the tree that I hang on to. I think I had like three or four seeds, but for some reason or another, I got rid of the other ones or maybe they didn't make it or something like that. But I held on to this one and I just kind of kept growing it. I have pears and more apples and all kinds of stuff out there, uh, pineapple guavas, all kinds of stuff that um, I'm actually really excited now for that um, they're going to start producing. So what I'm going to do is I already took a Q-tip that I have, I took uh, the pollen from my three apples outside in another episode I showed you, the previous episode, that uh, they're all flowering. These are red fleshed apples from cultivars, specific cultivars. And I took the pollen off of that and I'm gonna pollinate the uh, apples, these flowers here, and hopefully we'll get some apples off of it. So hopefully I get to try some of my homegrown apples. Now they may or may not be good. There's no way of really knowing until I get some. But um, if they're not gonna be good, they'll just become like their food, I'll still plant them out in the wild somewhere and it'll, it'll, it'll just be, you know, food for the wildlife essentially. But if they're good, then I'll definitely incorporate it into the orchard and landscape that I would like to make at some point. So either way, it's very exciting and I would love to take all of you along with me 
if you're doubting on whether to do this yourself, I think the results could be very cool. You know, it's, if anything, it's a lot of fun. So let me take you in a little bit closer and I'm gonna take this Q-tip and we're gonna pollinate the flowers on here. There's only a couple and there's a third one that's coming out, but that'll do the, I'll make sure that I do that one as well when it does finally open. So let me bring you in a little closer now. So here are a couple of the flowers. We got one right here. There's another one right next to it. And then there's a third one that's gonna be opening up probably in a day or two. So we're just gonna take this Q-tip that I rubbed all over the red fleshed apples. Just gonna rub it all over and pollinate these flowers. Oh, there's actually a fourth one in the back here that I even, didn't even notice. Just gonna make sure we pollinate them all real well. Just like that. Now this, um, this tree has been growing up against a fence because of the pot that it's in, it actually tends to uh, tip over. So I just tied it to um, the fence. I'll actually have to try to find a different solution for that. I really, I would rather it not be up against the fence anymore. It's causing it to be kind of flat and it's just, it's not ideal for it to be there. So, put it someplace else, probably along with the other apples and pears and things that I'm growing. Or at least the ones that are like actively rubbing up against the, the fence there. So that should do it. Now the time for pruning isn't ideal anymore. However, there is a branch right here that's growing straight up. I couldn't see this branch because it was actually behind a fence. Some of the, some of the main branches were poking through the fence, but I will be taking this branch off. It is just too close to the, um, to the trunk here. And it's just gonna look all, it's not gonna be good for the health of the tree. So I'm gonna take this one off right here. Here you can see the pot that it's growing in. It is definitely not ideal. I really, it really should be um, quite a bit bigger, but if you had this growing in ground, it actually maybe could have been producing quicker than maybe like the six years that I've been growing this. If you had this growing in ground, it's possible that it would have been producing after four or five years or something like that. So that's just something to consider as well. In the summer, one of the problems that this tree tends to suffer from is that it dries out very quickly. You know, because it is in a smaller container for the size of the tree, it's actually kind of hard to keep this guy watered. So I will be putting it in, uh, giving it a, a saucer and just trying to keep it watered the best way I can. It is mulched very heavily. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna do my best to uh, take the best care of it and uh, make sure that we try to get the best apples that I can get out of here. Um, I'll probably have to thin a couple of these apples off of there. If they do all produce, I'll probably keep, I don't know, one or two. It'll, it'll just kind of depend on what the apples are looking like and if they're having disease problems or bug problems or anything like that. But it is very exciting. I do encourage you to grow stuff from a seed and just seeing what happens with it, you know, they don't let anybody tell you that you can't do this or that you shouldn't do this. Obviously, if you want a specific cultivar, I would obviously highly recommend that you just get that cultivar. That's what I do. However, it's still fun to grow stuff from a seed and you can still get something out of it. And the cool thing is, is that whatever fruit that you get out of it, like whatever the taste says, whatever the taste is going to be like, is going to be unique to that fruit. It's going to be unique to that tree because it's been grown from a seed. It's not like it's, re it's gonna be reproduced that way. And that's how you come up with all kinds of cool new varieties. And obviously you can also manipulate this a little bit better by starting from a certain cultivar and pollinating it with another cultivar and just trying to get the similar traits or the best traits out of it, you know, out of the two cultivars that you're crossing. I might actually do some of that with my red fleshed apples that are outside. But well, that's a different topic for a different video. For now, I appreciate that you came along and I hope you found this enjoyable. And we'll see you in the next one. Tot de volgende keer.